Hello and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my Game of Thrones Legends mobile game content. Today I want to continue on with the Pro Tip series and this is going to be Pro Tip number 23. This is going to be about setting teams as like your attack and your defense teams. There is a difference and I'm going to talk to you about why and, and what I think are some good ideas to keep in mind when doing that. So, the first place that you can actually look at your teams is on your profile. So if you click on your profile, you can see that right now, mine defaults to my defense team. Uh, there are reasons why you want to choose certain characters for your defense team and your attack team. Obviously, your attack team is going to be the team that you do your fighting content with. This is the team that you're going to use when you do your campaign battles, trying to advance through the campaign. This is going to be the team that you use when you do your raid battles, fighting battles against other players in PvP. This is going to be your team that you attack with when you're doing events like the egg event and the uh, battle of the bastards event this is going to be your team that you attack with obviously it you know it's what it says so when you make this team you need to keep in mind the synergies and the desired effect you're trying to achieve when attacking you obviously, if you have a synergy like an ice team, or you can see with mine, I kind of have a light fire synergy going on. You want to keep in mind who is in your party when you're doing that so that they synergize well with each other. Like right now, I have Rhaenyra in my team, which synergizes well with Daenerys because Rhaenyra buffs Daenerys by putting fire stacks on the enemies and then when Daenerys goes off she does a lot more damage. I also have a synergy with Grey Worm and Daenerys in my team because they are allies so they partner together to create desired effects. One of the other little mini synergies I kind of have going on is Tenor, uh, Tyrion with everybody basically. Tyrion is a very good utility character that can put his buff on other players and cause them to do a lot better than they would normally do by either stamina regeneration or by giving them an AoE attack when they don't have one, like I do with my Ned. Uh, right now, this party also has kind of an AoE type synergy where everybody has the potential to do an AoE attack. What I mean by an AoE attack is that it hits all of the enemies on the board. Rhaenyra, Grey Worm, Daenerys, Tyrion, they do an AoE, and then Tyrion on Ned gives him the ability to do an AoE. So that's kind of another thing that I've built this party around. I'm building it for speed. I want to burn down the enemies as fast as possible so that I can either do well in an event, or I can do well in PvP or campaign, and I can get to the next battle a lot quicker. And I don't waste my time sitting there waiting on 10,000 shields to burn up before I can actually, you know, that type of thing. I don't like turtle builds. I like straight up attack. I like the AoE builds because I like to do as much damage to as many people as I can at once and burn them down and get it over with. So that's kind of why I focus on that. On your attack team, you need to obviously select a leader. Each one of those characters has a leadership ability, and I have chosen to go with my Renera as my leader in my attack team because I just I like the way her power synergizes with the current team that I have built. So at this point, you can see that this is your attack team. That is what will be saved in your game for whenever you do an attack. But something you also have to consider is your defense team. Now, I can't really use my defense team as a good example of what you probably should do, and I will explain why here in just a minute. But when you're setting a defense team, you need to think differently than your attack team. 
your defense team is going to be the team that you can kind of think of them as hanging out in your castle, waiting for somebody to attack you. And when they attack your fortress, they come out to defend type of thing. Uh, you, This is going to be the team that is going to defend your fortress and your resources from other players in raid. So when people raid you, this is going to be the team that they face. Now, a good strategy would probably be to have high defense players in this team, like Ned, like Sam, somebody who can taunt, somebody who can take a lot of damage as a tank, somebody who can put up a lot of shields, possibly even a character with a lot of sustain, like a Marjorie or a Caitlyn or a, um, uh, what's her face? I can't remember the other one. Uh, the other green healer that does really well healing all the party. That can help you survive a battle by adding, sus adding sustain or adding heal to your team when it needs it. Um, those are kind of the things that I think you should probably think more about when setting your defense team because a defense team works quite differently from an attack team. A defense team is something that comes into play only when somebody attacks you in raids. You do not have the ability to control this team in the actual battle. It happens behind the scenes, so you never really see it until it hits your log and then you can see well so and so attacked me an hour ago and they either beat me or i won and i either lost some resources or i didn't type of thing um so that's you know and the way the defense team works is the characters in your defense team don't have a secret board behind the scenes that they do matches on or anything like that they basically just get a set amount of stamina per turn. If you've ever watched another team that you're fighting in a raid, you'll see that each character just gets a little bit of stamina each turn, and then they do their attack, whatever their attack is. If their attack is to do a heal, they do a heal. If their attack is like Daenerys to do an AoE, they do an AoE. Um, those kind of things go on behind the scenes, and they're completely outside of your control as you don't get the ability to tell your defense team what they do. Other than you do tell them what to do by the characters that you select to be in that team. So just remember, whatever the attack of the character is, the main one, that's going to be what they do when their stamina bar fills up in a defense battle. You probably ought to think differently about who to set as your leader for a defense team as well. Because like for me, on my attack team, it's always Rhaenyra. Because she has one of the best leadership abilities in the game. And her skill creates power-ups that cause cascades that can just really get stuff moving. For a defense team, though, that's probably not the best option. Uh, something else that's probably better for a defense team would, would be like a Ned Stark that can set a taunt or increase defense or, you know, something like that. So when you're looking at your powers of your leaders trying to figure out who to be the leader of the defense team, you have to think differently. You have to think an AI-controlled battle in which your team members do their thing and you really don't have any control over it so you have to kind of think in defensive terms about what's the best leader to set for that party now one little trick i'll give you which is why my defense team is probably not the best optimized to actually defend my fortress, which is kind of dumb, I know, because that's the whole point of a defense team. But one of the reasons why I have my team set in this manner, and I'll show you why right now, if you look at my power, my power is 443,588. If you actually go to your house, you can look at your alliance members in your house and you'll see I'm in number fourth place on my house list. I have a power of what? 443,588, which is the exact power of my defense team. 
So the power of your defense team is what determines your ranking in your house member list. So if you're somebody that's worried about trying to keep that top spot, trying to keep that number two spot or that number three spot, then you need to consider sacrificing possibly having the best team on defense to have your highest power players in your team to be able to have that ranking that will, that power ranking that will allow you to go higher in your house's member list. That is completely why I have my team set the way I do. I don't have the absolute best defenders in my defender team to actually do their job as defenders. I have my highest power players in my team to enable me to have the best score I can in the Alliance rankings. Um, <laughs> it's a vanity thing, I guess. You know, I'm not really concerned about people raiding me and taking a few little pieces of iron and food and a little scrap of silver here and there. I would rather stay in the top rankings in my Alliance. I guess it's just a flex thing, you know? I just, I want to be there in my Alliance top rankings, so that's why I continually set my team this way. I could probably do better by having, you know, a more defensive character in Tyrion's spot and Daenerys' spot, but it is what it is. I like it this way, so that's why I do it. So that's just a little tip on the side for you as to how your house ranking score is determined. So... If you found this video interesting and if you found this content informative, I'd appreciate it if you'd share it around to your friends. Let's get the community more informed about what's going on. This is pro tip number 23, how to set your attack and defense teams and kind of the thoughts that I had behind which should be set for which. I may not be right on any of this. I may not be right on all of it, but it sounds good, and I, I think it's pretty smart, actually, based on my experience as a player of this game. So be sure to check my description for a link to the Discord. We have an active, thriving group on our Discord where we love to talk about the game, and we'd be glad to have you join us. And I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching my content, and I hope you have a great day. Join me on the next Pro Tip Series number 24. Not sure what it's going to be yet. I got to think about it. Talk to you later. Bye.